Hello and welcome to a new CIO video series. Today we have Mr. Samrat Das, who is the Chief Information Officer at PNB MetLife Insurance Company. Thank you for joining us, sir. So, um, how are you leading the dig digital wave at PNB MetLife? Thank you. Uh, I think before we go to the uh, digital wave, I think it's important to have a perspective about what business we are in. I think that will lay the course about how the strategy gets uh, dovetailed into what the business imperatives you want to achieve. So as you all know that we are in the business of life insurance and in a life insurance in industry, your distribution architecture plays a very important role in how you shape up your business imperatives. In a country like India with such kind of a population with an 85% uh, population being underinsured. Insurance penetration is one of the key deliverables in trying to achieve what we want to, uh, you know, move our PNL the way we would like to move it. Having said that, at PNB MetLife, we have a multi-distribution architecture with three primary channels being the force of driving value. The first one is the bank or the bank assurance as a channel. The second one is about agency as a channel, and third is the other alternate agency. Now, if we have to have a seamless architecture which fulfills the sales and service of PNB MetLife with our ambitious growth targets, it's important that we have a seamless experience across the customer journey of sales and service. And that's the trigger of what I called as our digital strategy. What I call as a digital strategy is the convergence between the physical and the digital world or what we call as the digital blur. So the digital story at PNB is on three fundamental principles of what we call as digitize, data and disrupt. And these three fundamentals plays an important role in trying to shape up the business we would like to do. When I say talk about digitize, it's basically trying to make the whole onboarding as well as the servicing proposition seamless and digitized and 24 by 7 into 365. And why do we do it? The business imperative is to drive operational efficiencies. What are the cutting edge technologies you are adopting for the same? That's a good question. Uh, on the three themes again, on the, on the strategy part of it, when we talk about digitize, we talk about the whole ecosystems around mobility. With a country with 200% penetration of mobile phones or for that matter any handle device, leveraging that for a competitive advantage is one of the things which we talked about in the whole process of digitize. So our entire onboarding process, we have a theme which we call eBranch which works on any tablets and it is 24 by 7 into 365 and completely paperless. On the data, which is the second part of it, the cutting edge technology is a spectrum. It talks about from simple data warehousing platforms to advanced analytics, AI, machine learning, and is a spectrum depending upon what is the business problem or a disruption we wanted to do, we are leveraging each one of them. The last one is around disruption. So in the whole technology, digital ecosystems, there's a lot of disruption which is happening. You can talk about AI, you can talk about machine learning, you can talk about blockchain, you can talk about virtual reality, you can talk about augmented reality, and so many things are there in the pipeline. As a company and as a strategy, we are continuously evaluating those disruptive technology and getting a meaningful proposition at PNB MetLife to ensure that our end objective of making an immersive experience to our customers value to our distributors and to our employees uh, to do that. I think that's the key of various technologies which gets embedded into this larger three themes of digitize, data and disruption. How, what business outcomes are you expecting out of these initiatives? Fantastic. I think for every digital story or a strategy, there has to be a business outcome 
and our three pillars which we said about talks about four outcomes which we look for and that's very very important for any insurance company one in simple terms is about growth insurance is the business of scale and growth plays a very important parameter growth can be measured by new business premium it can be measured by the operating profit etc the second important lever or the outcome which we talk about is persistence persistency is a very very important lever in a life insurance company in terms of how you manage your pnl that's the second lever which we talk about the third lever we talk about is our product mix because product mix gives you that diversification to ensure that your profitability profitability are sustainable and deepening the last one is in a business of scale your expense control or your expense ratios are very very important to figure out that you are moving away from a fixed cost to a variable cost and that's the fourth lever we're trying to do away so anything and everything we do on digital has to dovetail into one or more of these four outcomes broad outcomes which i talked about correct so how does this new wave of uh, you know digital wave is impacting your role what kind of collaboration does it require with the other functional leaders yes as we are more disruptive as we are more agile as the expectations are changing and as i say from being an order taker to being a decision maker or making this business more competitively collaboration plays a very very important role because in today's world to solve a business problem you cannot solve it pointedly it is all inclusive it is all agile and it is all at the speed of light today no one can wait for 2 years for a solution to come people don't even wait for 2 days perhaps how does it play out in such a kind of an environment the only thing it plays around is a collaborative approach where business in line with the technology partners along with the bigger ecosystem of the insure tech or the fintech cohesively trying to figure out how do we continuously disrupt ourselves the theme is fail first and learn because that's the theme is how we work ahead and we don't wait for a perfect solution to happen and wait for years so how are you leveraging hyper personalization for deepening the customer experience relationship exactly so the customer demographics over a period of time have changed from simple cohorts which is based on gender by region or by language or by anything to a whole place where people now look for experience rather than anything which was pointed products so while we are in the business of giving a service in a simple terms it's about a contract life insurance is nothing but a contract but the expectations of the contract which gets translated into experience and with the new millennials coming in the experience becomes a very very important part in trying to figure out what we want to do now in this experience when you talk about there are a lot of things which comes in play one is about your design thinking the second thing is about how personalized you are to do it whether it is for a one point of interaction you are doing with a customer or for a repeated transaction you are doing with a customer how you are doing personalized and as you rightly said from personalization to hyper personalization to figure out that you are treated as you and not one in that cohort which is more of templatized way of working to becoming more personalized obviously there are tools technology process design thinking ui ux etc which all collectively cohesively works towards making that hyper personalization profitable it's a journey we have started the journey we will continuously try to question ourselves challenge ourselves and build up on this journey what kind of weak and strong ai solution used by pnb medlife right so ai is an end of a spectrum i think it's important to understand uh the the whole uh, spectrum in, in the right perspective so as i say that insurance business is all about trying to predict something it's about an event and to predict something what you need is data 
and that's the foundation of anything which you want to do. So it can be from a simple prediction of a business insight to a complex prediction of trying to understand a consumer behavior. The journey of AI starts with first about trying to see that your data, whether it's your structured or your unstructured data, is in a single place with a single source of truth. And that's how the nomenclature of data warehouse comes in place, where it gives you the ability to have insights about what business you should do. As you move up the value chain, you try to do simple predictions. The prediction can be of an event, the prediction can be of, of, of uh, a behavior, a prediction can be of a macroeconomic change which is happening across, across the globe or in the country. AI comes in this spectrum in trying to see how you want to do it. Chatbots, uh, frameworks around AI, machine learnings are all together trying to figure out what is the best way out to predict that event or the journey which one wants to embrace. If you ask me about anything uh, uh, pointed about it, I think it's the intent and the journey which enterprise adopts in the right spirit makes that AI journey more fruitful. So what kind of questions should a CIO ask from the vendor while buying an AI solution or a tool? Yeah, that's a fantastic question. I think the first thing is that does he understand business? Because the final outcome of an AI is a business problem. And if you have to solve a business problem, you have to understand nuances about the business. Whether it is selling cars or making cars to selling life insurance, you have to understand the nuances around that and then build that means to an end which comes with AI. I think that's very fundamental to understand. And a lot of times I think we are a little short-sighted where we make technology as the end and not as a means. What are your views on having a ro robust uh, supportive IT infrastructure for AI? And what exam I mean, for example required amount of data in integrity or consolidation, data lakes or warehouse etc? Absolutely, I think I've already spoken about it. The first thing is about in the AI is about having the IT appliances in place. The appliances is a culmination of your hardware and your software and that's the key because in a kind of a, you know, in our industry for us, we have around 3.2 million customers with us. We have 20 terabytes of data with us and it is growing at a 20% year on year cumulative growth. With such kind of a huge voluminous data, having a single source of truth which is resilient, which is predictable and which is a single source of truth is paramount for any predictions to happen. And that's where data warehouse, IT appliances, a lot of things talks about cloud where you can actually leverage your compute and your storage with easy ramp up, ramp down and whatever you want to do in your simulations to do that. And then you get into the journey which you try to figure out those pointed specific predictions you want to do by using AI and coupled with machine learning. What kind of AI roadmap have you set up for uh, a PNB MetLife? The roadmap is putting the foundation in place in terms of whatever I said about appliances, about single source of truth, the operational data store, moving to data warehouse and then moving up the value chain with small business outcomes or events to a larger complex problem to solve. Now here's an interesting thing, as an insurance company, a lot of data is captive to us by the virtue of the business which we do, we almost know everything about you if you are insured with us. And the more data you have, the ability to predict is more. Now, apart from that, you also have the big data in your social ecosystem. There's a lot of data which is structured and unstructured which is moving around. How do I leverage that data and bring it into the simple platform to make sure that my predictions of a business outcome or my predictions of a business event is more accurate as we go ahead. And that's how you couple big data, get data lake in place along with your captive data to figure out what you want to do. What kind of business outcome are you expecting out of AI initiatives? Sure. See, one of the biggest problems the whole industry is facing in life insurance is about persistency. Persistency in simple terms is that 
how much is the stickiness of a customer for a contract which may last from 10 years to 20 years. The industry has been grappling with that issue because there's a lot of leakages which happens as we go down the contract. One of the important things around AI is that ability to predict that why is that leakage happening. And there is no right or wrong questions to it. It differs from organizations to regions to the product which you have sold, to so some behavioral issues which you have around this. And here is what AI comes in place trying to see that why is it failing because only once you know why you can go back and fix the problem. Can you share some learnings, you know, how has your journey been as an IT leader and uh, can you talk about few of your technology experiences or maybe the toughest project? Sure. Since we've been talking about data, let me give you a perspective about data. Uh, data in form of data warehouse, artificial intelligence, about uh, machine learning is a science and that's very, very technology oriented. But from my career perspective, I found this whole journey around data to be more of an art than of a science. If I ask you a simple question today and I can ask it to the industry, who owns the data in an organization? You will have 10 different answers from 10 different people across the spectrum. And that's the first problem about why is it an art? Because till the time you don't own the data, you will not be able to figure out what you want to do as a business outcome. A lot of places in the organization, there's always a ball which keeps on moving around, a department A owns it or B owns it or C owns it. The art is about data governance coming in place where you exactly say that here is the owner and here is the steward. And that's the key about trying to break, which is not a technology problem, but more of an art, more of a cultural problem to do it. Asking to your, answering to your questions about how does it shape my career, I think that's the biggest learning I have said is that if you are able to crack that problem, which is not a science, science is okay, there's a lot of stuff which is there, but the art is a little uh, uh, tricky. I think that you have played your role, what you wanted to do. Thank you so much for coming, sir. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure.